Hi guys, today we're going to learn a little bit more about Discovery Education, which is a web 2.0 tool that we use through Baltimore County Public Schools. It is a personalized content and teaching experience with hundreds of thousands of digital curriculum and professional learning resources, and you can personalize it, and it's great for any content, so I thought it would be a great one to review. You can easily find Discovery Ed by going into BCPS1 and clicking on Instructional and Productivity Tools. Once you click on there, you're going to see the tab that says Discovery Education Studio. Go ahead and click on that. Once you click on it, if you are a Baltimore County Public School teacher, this will automatically pop up. Your information is automatically in there. If not, it's the same credentials that you use logging on to BCPS1. Once you log on to your home page, you're going to see all the services, the preferred content, and the instructional tools that you have access to. You can personalize your page to your grade level, your subject, or just the interest of you or your students. Today we are going to focus more on Studio, which is right here, but I'm going to walk you through a few other features just to give you a general idea of the website and what all it entails. I also wanted to take a second to talk about some vocab terms that you'll hear me say a few times. So the first thing is channels. If you go to your search engine up here and type in a word, you're going to get a bunch of channels. So just keep that in mind when we go back to this uh, place. The other thing that we are going to talk about is called a quick list. So if you were to click on one of the channels, you can see this little plus button and whatever you find, if you want to add it to a quick list, which we can then add to a board builder, again, a new vocab word that we'll talk about, you would just click here and it would add it to your quick list. Which so once you've added something to your quick list, you can remove it if you want to. Um, if it's something you did by accident, click it again. So I've added it to my quick list and a quick way to go find your quick list is up here. I have 16 saved from things that I've done in the past. Um, and from here, you can share, assign, you can add it to your board builder, you can add it to my content, or you can remove it here as well. Sharing is great if you find something that you really like and you wanna share with a different student or a different teacher um, via a live link. If you wanna to go to assign, assign is also great because you can assign a specific video or an interactive activity directly to a student, say they were absent um, or they need a little bit more help, you can assign it directly to that student. Okay, so let's get off quick list for a second and I wanna stay on this page. I wanna show you how you can narrow your results by filtering your services, your grade level, your resource type, and other characteristics that can be available to you. You can even do copyright and publish your date. So let's start up here with all services. So I am gonna to go to science tech book because I am a science teacher. I teach middle school, so I'm gonna keep it sixth through eighth. Right now I wanna explore everything that they have, but sometimes I want specific videos. If you go to videos, you'll see the different time durations. You can do different clips. And again, there's always that plus button, so you can add it to your quick list. Over here, you can um, see specific courses. I always go to grade eighth because I teach eighth grade, um, and it gives me a little bit more detailed results. But again, I can always uh, always come up here and go to my search engine. Um, if you go full down, you can see the type, the details, closed captions, if it's edible, if there's a quiz included. If you have a time crunch, you can filter by time. You can also filter by copyright. So I know some teachers don't like to play older videos. I prefer the newer ones. So I usually always click 2014 or newer. So it seems like for Earth, there is nothing 2014 or newer, so we can play around and add a couple other different copyright dates. So what I'm gonna do right now is go through some different segments and channels to kind of add to my quick list. When we do a Discovery Ed board builder, uh, we are gonna kind of show a little bit of how you can add these. So I wanna do an array of a video, an image, a text. Um, so let's do, we'll add this one to my board builder. It's a full video for a student to watch. Let's go to images. This one's a good image of a satellite. I like that one. Uh, let's go to a reading. I really want to add a reading to my board to assign to a student, and we'll click this one. Okay, so I added all of those, and again, if I go to my quick list, you'll see the ones that I just added. In addition to adding things to a quick list, you can also just play a video, stream a live video directly to your students from here. So say I want a little bit more of um, light reflection and I'm having a hard time telling my students how to do it. Sometimes you can pull up YouTube, but again, Discovery Ed, everything is right here. I have about five minutes to spare, so I'm gonna pull up about a three minute video that I can instantly play for them, and then we have a couple minutes to talk about it. 
And going back to what I said before, say I just have one student who maybe was absent or who needs a little bit more help. He's really just not understanding like reflection and absorption. So what I can do is I can come over here, go to share. I can send a direct link to them via Schoology. Or I can come over here to assign. I can assign a date, a due date, select class. I can select my specific class, I can do all students, or I can uncheck the ones that I don't want. And once you have picked the students that you want, you would click assign, it will automatically go to their Discovery Ed account, and you can just let them know that it's there. So let's exit out of this, let's go back, go back. Okay, so here we are again, I have enough for my quick list that I want, and now we're really going to focus on Discovery Ed board. There's two quick ways of how you can get back to the main screen. You can either click right here and you would be able to click anything you want to go. We're going to do studio, but I do want to show you another way, which if you just click the discovery education home screen or home button, it'll take you to our home screen. So we're going to go to studio first and explore that a little bit before we dive into exactly what to do. So this is what the main page of Discovery Ed Studio looks like. As you can see, I've had two boards actually share with me with another fellow teacher of mine. And this is the one that I've created to show you the end product. So we're going to go through it quickly and we're going to create one together just to kind of go through all the aspects of it. So I have created a story of earth fossils. This is my first unit with my eighth graders and this is an introductory web quest that they can do on their own in their own time throughout the day uh, or throughout the class. I have included pictures and text and videos. I've numbered them all so that they know what order to go into and at the end I have a couple assignments, an exit ticket, and then a kind of recap. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to create a board. We're going to start from scratch. Okay, so by default, your board will be named the time that it was created. In order to edit it for the name, the description, and any tags or grades you want, you're going to go ahead and click up here. Go right earth. Go brief description. I'm going to write eighth grade. We're going to save it. And then what I like to do is just refresh it so that it pops back up. Okay, so now you have a blank canvas to create any kind of board you want. This can be used for students to create a presentation. They can type in it. They can add any of our quick lists that they can also get to. But for now, I'm going to make it as if I'm a teacher making something for my students to give to them during a day that I might be absent. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is add my background. I don't like looking at a white blank page. So for this one, I'm going to do green and I'm going to do the background. Let's see. You can play with the different couple ones. Let's do galaxy. And all we're going to do is play around a little bit. So I definitely want... Okay, I like Galaxy the best. And now that we have chosen Galaxy, we are then going to go and design the board, how we want it to look so that we can add different items from our quick list. So we're going to go here to the blue button. I always like to add a headline. So we're going to write Earth. I'm going to say lesson one. I am then going to add another headline if I want to write all my objectives. I'm going to add a subtitle. Any description box. My subtitle would be my due date. This is going to be due July 6th. And again, I'm just doing stuff really quickly um, so that you could also move that up if you wanted to, or you can move that down. But yes, I'm doing things really quickly, kind of just to show you exactly where some things would be and how to add written words not from the quick list. Okay, so say I'm, I'm good with my headline, I have my objectives, now I want to actually add some content. 
So the best way to do is to go to blocks. And if you already know, okay, I have three different things that I have saved to my quick list. I want them to do three different activities. You can go ahead and just click three blocks. You could do wonder wall. If you only want to add one, um, but for today we're, gonna, today, we're gonna do three. Okay, so here's what it looks like. It's plain and simple. In order to add something from your quick list, you're gonna go ahead and click this, add from quick list. You could also, if you have nothing, you can search Discovery Ed and it would take you to that search engine where you had all those different um, sections that you could pick from, whether it be video or text, but, um, or you can just write something straight up if you want to. You can upload something from your device, like a Word document, but for today, I'm just going to do quick list since I already saved three of them. Um, I'm gonna do my first image. I'm gonna go ahead and click add. So I'll exit out of that. Now, when you click on your image, you have different settings over here. Your image could be at the top with a brief description. You can also make it bigger, make it smaller. Um, you can go to the left again or it could just be the full on image. What I like to do is leave some room for writing and if you wanna click up here, this is where you can add the, like the, the one, the two, the different steps. So you can always modify anything you want up here. If you click on it, click it, exit out of it, you'll see it right here. So again, you can add anything to it. All right, so let's move on to another one. We're gonna to go to our quick list again. I'm going to go to glossary terms, go ahead and, oops, I double clicked the wrong one. Let's go back to that, I'm gonna add and exit out. Okay, so again, that's here, I'm gonna to go to the top. I like the way that looks, so I'm good to go. Go ahead and click here. I'm going to go to my, let's just go to search discovery ed, let's write earth. So you can, guys can kind of see how you would do that. Um, I'm going to do a video. And let's put in this video, add selected. And then you have your full video. Okay, so I have my three that I want. I, again, if I wanted to, I can click on this. I can change the title of it. I can change down here. It also comes with MLA citation. So it's great if, they, if students are using this for a project for good dig, uh, digital citizenship. Okay, so the one thing I want to point out as well is if you go up to the present button, it will actually show you what it looks like as if you assigned it to a student and you were a student. So this is what it would look like. The students um, can uh, view details of everything that you added. They can watch the movie um, and they can view the image. To get out of that, you would simply just hit the create button again and then you back to where you started. So I, f I really feel like the board builder is, is so user friendly. Um, everything you need is over here on the right hand side. And before you get started on it, it's really easy to go to the different contents and to discover um, things that you might want to put in and add to your quick list to be able to quickly add in a board. Um, when I created my board, it took me maybe 15, 20 minutes total. And that was really diving into all the different details of it. So the one thing I wanna talk about now is this button up here. Um, it's called the share button. So once you're finished, uh, you can share to other colleagues. You can also assign to different students or classes. You can publish it or you can get a live link. So if we were to invite collaborators, you can allow them to make edits. So whatever you send to them, they can edit it. And when you log on to your Discovery Ed and you check out your board, their changes will be on there. They can also chat directly to you. Um, and then we can also manage users with that. Let's go to assign it and distribute. So this is how we would distribute to students. Um, if you want them to be able to, so say you give them a general template of a board for a project, you can allow them to edit that board. So that would be great if you have a project and you know they need seven different things and they need a title and a descriptive, you can add basically a template for them and then they can go in and collaborate with other group members and, and edit it. They can also chat, you can put in a due date um, and then if you head to the classroom, you can assign it to all your different classrooms or again, individual students. If you go to publish, 
then you can publish your board and you can add a different additional message. This is another way that you can do um, share to students or with a link. However, they cannot collaborate back with you. It's just a link to your board. They will be able to click the live links um, and be able to do all the different activities you have. But again, they're not going to be able to edit it. So this will be good if it's an assignment given to students that you just want them to complete. And then lastly is a live link which this will allow others to view your active board, active board and see live changes. So again, it's very, it's very similar to the one that we just talked about where you publish it. However, the only difference with the live link, it's, it's a hyperlink and it's uh, basically it will take you to see changes that are made in real time. So if you sent the live link to someone, they will be able to change it. And if you had the board up on your um, computer, you will be able to see the changes that they make directly when they're making them. And that is the general idea of a studio board. Again, we use something like maybe subwork. I'm giving them this activity. I would go to um, assign and distribute and I would give it to all of my students. If you wanted to go back to others that you have made, you would just click on the studio button. Um, you would go to my board. You would see the ones that had been assigned, any that was archived. And if a student actually, or if you give um, a board, or if you give a student a board and there is an assignment to it, any time a student hands in anything, you'll see it up on the notification. This is great because we can view the boards and we can determine if a student might need to uh, redo it or it might need to be regraded, uh, or we can actually send feedback, we can give credit, we can give no credit, so it's a great formative assessment tool. So let's just do this as an example because this has been submitted by a student prior. So this is something that a student did. You can see that he added my title, my description, a um, whole bunch of pictures. And this was actually for a project in replacement of a PowerPoint. So this time I can either grade it, which is this section over here, or I can send it back. If I was to send it back, I would give my reasoning and tell him what to do. If I were to grade it, then I can give full credit and no credit. So at this point, Discovery Ed is not linked directly to our Schoology accounts. Um, but if you were to go to your different students in your classrooms, you would be able to see their grade, print out a report, and then you could add it to Schoology. All right, so let's go back home. And so this is the one we did. Let's go back to Discovery Ed. And again, here's our home page that I could get to anything that I wanted to. Um, again, this is a great tool to use in the classroom. It's a great tool for teachers, for students, for all content. Um, it's great for sub work. It would be great for individual work. It would be great for extra work. It really is an all-inclusive tool that is an online library that has endless amounts of videos and images and all different kind of clips that you would need in order to engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate anything within your curriculum. I hope that you enjoyed my video. I hope that it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, please comment below on the blog, and I will be happy to either make another video or to help you out any way I can. Thanks, guys.